Welcome back to my channel. I'm outside Pontons here at Southport. Been looking on TripAdvisor over the last few weeks and I thought, is it really as bad as TripAdvisor is making it out? The reviews range from plus five right down to what people have said. They'd give it a minus five if they could. So I thought, let's give it a go. So I've actually arranged to book in for two nights. I've not gone in the holiday site yet. I've not gone in and had a look around. Cars parked over the road. So join me. Let's see if it's as bad as Chip Advisor says. Now the first thing that's confusing about Ponton Southport is the name. Because it's not actually in Southport. Because if you look down this road, down that way, about three quarters of a mile down that road is Ainsdale train station. And if you look this way, about 400 yards up there is Ainsdale Beach. And over there is Ponton Southport. But if you look up this road, this coastal road up here, that way is Southport, which is three and a half miles away. So the name itself is slightly deceiving. If you've never been here before, you are actually three and a half miles away from Southport. Up on block three, other side, this parking space is there. Come back here to the yellow sign, then they'll give you a keys. Which? At the bottom of the yellow sign, there's a reception. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Eight. 
out. Thirty-nine. Let's pull in here and have a little look. Thirty-seven, thirty-five. Right, I've just parked the car, but I am having trouble finding which block I should be in. So there's 38 over there. 40, 46, 50. And this one's 39. 37, 35. Let's just try down here. 39, 41. So 40 is, so 40 is three blocks that way. But 41, is here. A weird layout. And we are in number ninety eight. Tip number on the door. Let's see what it's like inside. Now, on first impression, it doesn't look that bad, to be honest with you. I mean, straight away, we got a random. Oh, it's the top off the wardrobe. <laughs> yes, that's the top off the wardrobe. So that is the wardrobe. Right, so I think someone's obviously had fun with the wardrobe. Right, it looks... It looks dated. I must admit, uh, the walls... There's a lot, a lot of stains along the lower walls. They have touched up. You can see that they've touched up in points. So rather than go along with a tin of paint and give it a fresh look, what they've gone and done is just here and there, touch it up. Let's have a look at the fridge. Fridge. It's not spotless, but it's not dirty. Cooker. Grill. Doesn't look too bad. A few stains on the front. Cooker, which I'm not going to be using. Microwave. Ugh. The microwave hasn't been cleaned. It's minty. Probably won't be using that. The grime in the top.
usual toaster. Let's have a look at the kettle. I have looked in some of these kettles before and I've ended up having to go out and buy one. Uh, needs a good boil completely. Up to the cupboard, that's your lucky cupboard. Four glasses. Four of everything, obviously for a family of four. Do I love, what I love about these, these places is, they don't expect you to stay in when they give you your dining plate and it's the size of a saucer. Do you know what? So far, it's not as bad as what I expected. Bins empty and clean. Draw with nothing in. Haven't noticed any pans. Absolutely nothing in there. Oh, here's the pans. Someone's been eating away at the edge of the cupboards. Probably hungry. It's dated. It's very dated. The pans. I recommend if you are coming to Pontons, bring yourself your own frying pan. It's rotten inside this cupboard. You can just see how filthy at the back. Absolutely filthy inside these cupboards. Yeah, I recommend if you are coming, bring your own pan, your own frying pan especially, because I guarantee every single thing that you cook will stick to that. I'm not going to be using the microwave because it's disgusting. I found with Pontons though, a lot of the times, what I found with Pontons a lot of the time is you have to give it a clean when you arrive. What I do personally. Right, let's have a look at the bathroom. Here we go. It's your usual clinical bathroom, Conti board. They're all standard, they're always the same with a three quarter bath. Shower curtain looks new, which is a change to some I've been in. Yeah, typical bathroom. I don't know what that is on the wall. Not 100% certain if I want to know. Into the bedroom. Again, a wardrobe with no door, no back. I don't think that's got a back on it, has it? Oh, it has, but it's screwed to the wall, obviously for safety reasons. These radiators never had the opportunity to try them. And to be honest with you, they look that dated. I don't think I'd even want to try them. I mean, that's been passed. Test date. What? 2017. March. So that hasn't been tested since 2017. Pretty interesting. Let's have a look at the other one. Does it have a test sticker on it? No, this one doesn't even have a test sticker on it. So... Back to the bedroom. Now I must admit, on first look, these look, they look like they, they look fairly new. The pillows are, 
well they're not old hard air there there's an air there There you go, and the quilt itself. Do you know these look new? These look fairly new. The reason why I'm saying that, there's a couple of bits on them, but they look fairly new. The reason for that is because if I go in here, into the living room, there are some on the bottom of the wardrobe. And as you can see, I've seen better days. I mean, they're just, I think they're the old ones that they've just left, look at the hairs on that. I mean, you wouldn't want to sleep with that quilt over you. So I don't understand why they've actually left them here. I mean, they are just disgusting. I don't understand why they've been left here. But I'm not worried about them because the ones... Well, I won't actually be using these. Um, these look fairly clean. They look fairly new. But I won't actually be using these because we bring our own pillows and we bring sleeping bags. So we won't be using their stuff anyhow. But the beds themselves look, they do look new. They, there's some bits on them, but they look fairly new. The floor looks clean. The typical bed, double bed. That pulls out. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. There's actually ball marks on the window. I don't know if you can see them, but there's actually football marks on the window. Now how, I don't understand how you get football marks up on a, an upper level. But there you go, that's your inside of the actual apartment. Let's check outside and see what the holiday camp has to offer. Now I know we arrived late uh, after five o'clock at night and I was told that a lot of the facilities have closed now and we'll be back open tomorrow from 10 o'clock. Um, but I'm just gonna have a little wander around and see exactly what there is available. Wander at the back. I think at one time this must have been some sort of go kart track. It's fully overgrown, I don't think they've used it for years from the looks of it. Well, I'd say it was a go kart track. Um, maybe it's just somewhere where they store tyres, but there's a lot of tyres. The complex itself is one huge circle. I'm just walking on the actual perimeter. Looks a bit concentration camp with the barbed wire, but I suppose they've got to have some sort of security. This looks a fairly new area, or maybe it's just, maybe it's not as new as I think, but kiddies climbing area with a bark surface. Orbiters. I think these are all attractions that you have to pay to ride. Again, not open till tomorrow. So basically when you first arrive, it looks like everything is closed by the time you book in at four o'clock in the afternoon. You can actually pay, by the way, to book in earlier. 
if you're in the club package you can pay £10 to book in at 12 o'clock or just after 12 o'clock if your standard package then it will cost you an extra £20 to get your key around about 12 o'clock and there you have the Queen Vic pub I like most pontons here, we have your arcade area This all looks fairly new. Looks like some sort of interaction area for the children with dinosaurs. Good morning, it's day two of our visit to Pontons here in Southport. Just a little update video. I'm gonna have a little wander around to see if the activities are open today. I was told yesterday when we arrived at five o'clock that all the activities were closed for that day and they would be back open tomorrow from 10 till 4. So this is a little update video and I'm going to have a little look to see which activities are open and which ones aren't. Unfortunately we have Jurassic Park on the dinosaur little part of the park over there. We have Jurassic Park theme continuously playing on a tape so therefore for copyright reasons I may have to overdub this video. So let's see which activities are open. Just having a look, just having a look at this banister, that's not very safe really, is it? Um, right, in front of us, the inflatable area isn't open. Now, I don't know if that's not open because of the weather, um, but from the looks of it, it's tied up, there's gates across, there's lawn mowers in it, and it doesn't look like it's been used for a long time. So that area is definitely not going to be opening up today. If you just have a little look, see? No, this area is not opening today. And it doesn't look like it's been open for a while. Soccer pitch is being used. Right over in the distance, if you can see through the railings, you can see the trampolines are being used. So they're open. I'm trying to over talk on this video because of Jurassic Park theme is continuously being piped out which is becoming slightly annoying because our room is only there so it's just there our room and it's becoming slightly annoying because that's all we can hear all day long I mean I can understand them having um, a soundtrack playing inside the area but to be actually blasting out all over the complex it's a bit ridiculous I have noticed earlier on that the go-karts are going, they're out. They're out, so they're actually being used. And directly in front of me, the bats is open. Obviously, I can't go into the bats and record. And in the distance, I can see the orbiters are out as well. So, 90% of I'd say 90% of activities are actually being used. You can see the orbiters in the distance. 90% of activities are open. As I said, I'll take you over and show you Jurassic Park, but unfortunately due to copyright, I will have to turn the sound off or overdub it with my own music.
Right, so as I said, the fun bikes are open. The trampolines are open. Crazy golf is open, but you find it very hard to be able to play crazy golf. <laughs> Soccer pitch is open, swimming pool open, orbiters open, and the go-karts were open. The only thing that isn't actually open is um, the inflatable area. Unfortunately, that's not open, and it doesn't look like it's been open for a while. The other thing with the bats, which surprised me, there's a notice on the leaflet that you get given about the time of the swimming pool, which only states it's only open Tuesdays and Thursdays out of a whole week. Um, and it says there are no locker facilities. So you literally have to, you literally have to walk from the swimming pool back to your accommodation soaking wet. Um, so that's a little bit of something they need to sort out. I just don't understand why. You don't have changing facilities in the bats. Right, I'm going to bring this vlog to a close. This is the end of our two night stay here at Ponson Southport. For the two nights, it cost us £49 for two people for this accommodation. Now, I'm not going to actually make a comment on our stay. I'm going to leave this open for the viewers. I've shown you what's available. I've shown you what you get for your money. I've showed you our accommodation. I'm going to leave this up to you. Tell me what you think in the comments about Ponsons here at Southport. The online reviews are not very good. In fact, they're actually terrible online. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.